It's a nice sunny day. I've got the user section video ready. Roll the intro. Okay, and what you're seeing right now is the new and improved Umbraco user section in the Umbraco back office. Now, typically this section is gonna be locked down to only uh, the admins, and this is where we're gonna do user management. And just to recap real quick, a user is somebody who's meant to log into the back office, whereas Umbraco calls a member, somebody who's maybe signing up on your site, registering, never meant to be here. So we're only talking about users who need to be in the back office. So uh, it's a very small tree, and in fact, it used to be a little larger prior to the 7.7 .7 update. Uh, we're going to skip form security today because that's actually just a third party, or actually a first party package, but it's separate from a baseline Umbraco install. So today we're actually going to just uh, handle users. If we right click users, uh, we actually don't get a context menu there. So one suggestion to Umbraco might be to maybe move this invite user and or this create user functionality over into that as well. So invite user is a, is a cool thing because now you just add a name, an email, and a group in a message, and it's going to send them an email and get them set up and they can get logged in by themselves, set up their password. For today's example, we're gonna do create user. And for this one, we're gonna do uh, Barney Flintstone, or actually Barney Rebel. Ha, got me. And so he's gonna be Barney at Flint, Stone.net. Please don't send any emails to flintstone.net in case that's an actual real one. And Barney is just going to be an editor. So when we click on that list, though, we do get to see uh, a new wish concept in Umbraco. So you get administrators, editors, translators, writers. There's one here that somehow I was playing around and got this to uh, create its own group. So ignore that one. You won't have that one. Um, it kind of gives you an idea out of the box um, what they're going to give you here uh, as far as access. So early on, we don't trust Barney, or maybe we do, but we want to give him limited access, so we're going to make him an editor. Notice you can put him in multiple groups, which is a cool thing. And if we create that user, um, you can see that, uh, ooh, look at that, there's his password. Uh, we can copy that, do something with it. Uh, we can create another user, or we can go to the profile, and that's what we'll do. So. Okay, um, if you're familiar with the older versions of Umbraco, and I'm not talking that old, I'm talking maybe a, a couple months ago, um, this looked very different. So this is actually very welcome. So the email here is actually going to be the username. So uh, before it was a little confusing on what is the username and what is the email and how do we do that? Or how do we differentiate and what's, what is the difference? So you can also pick their, their language, which will help localization of the back office. Here's where uh, you can uh, fiddle with the, the groups here. One very important thing uh, whenever you set up any sort of user is their content nodes. And uh, in order to kind of put that into context, let's open a second tab here and just kind of look here. So out of the box, you may want your editor to be able to see everything in the content tree from the homepage on down, or you may want to restrict them to only see certain things. So in the case of Barney, uh, he's an intern, and he, he, we're gonna restrict him to these uh, folders down here, and very specifically, we're gonna say October, November. Barney, that's all you can see. Therefore, he cannot see the site settings, et cetera, et cetera. So if we flip back over here to do so, we're going to click there. And what's really cool in this version of Umbraco is we can select more than one. Um, not that long ago, you could only select one. So if we hit submit, uh, there you go. And then we're going to do the same thing on media. So if we flip back here to media, just to give you an idea of what everything looks like, we're going to tell Barney that he's only allowed to play in either this folder or his own folder. And just for fun, we're going to, we're going to create a new folder and we'll call it Barney's folder. And save. Okay, now that we've created a little media uh, item for himself, we're going to say, Barney, you can only hang out there. Of course, you can give him more than one. Let's say we have Barney's folder and 80s rocks too. Maybe that's a collaborative folder. We'll give that both to him. And so um, there's this little section here that says, based on the groups here, the user has access to the following nodes, media root, content root. Not sure that that makes a whole lot of sense. Um, and you'll see why, but maybe it's just how I'm interpreting that. So we're going to save that first, and we're going to go back over here, and we're going to log out. 
Actually, I take that back. We need Barney's password. So let's start with the, uh, let's continue on with the, the change password bits here. And I'm just going to give him a simple, easy to remember password. And we're going to save that. And that's how you change the password. And maybe while we're still here, let's talk about those two there. So we can disable a user, re-enable. You can't delete users in a bracket it's for audit trail purposes. And finally, you can uh, add a, a cool picture uh, there. And let's let's go ahead and find a picture of Barney, probably from his LinkedIn profile or something else. Photo. Where are you at, Mr. Rubble? There you are. Oh darn, too bad we can't actually crop that. That would have been real cool. Um, anyway, so there's Barney's photo. Maybe that's some feedback for the Embraco group. We're gonna log out. And we're gonna log back in as Barney. And hopefully this just works. Hey, it does. So when Barney logs in, you'll notice that he sees his two folders, but we also get the context of the trees to which they live in. You get that little uh, red with the circle with the cross through it, meaning you can't do some things. If, you, if Barney tries to click things, uh, you'll notice he's got much more retracted things he can do there. Uh, and then this list is actually shorter too, um, but he can still create content here. He can create his own news item. And if Barney publishes, there we go. So we haven't really taken away a lot of functionality from Barney to do his job, but we've given him some context and kind of put some limits on him. If we were to click on Barney's media section, he's got that collaborative 80s rocks media folder, and then he can also um, do something with Barney's folder there. And notice over here on the left-hand side that he only has content media, and that's very typical of, of what you're going to do with your content editors. You're going to take away the keys to the kingdom. You're not going to let them do settings or, or users or the developer section. All right, so if we flip back, not to that, uh, back to, um, let's see here. We're going to log out, so let's, let's start with that. So we're going to log out, and we're going to log back in as me. And notice the contrast here. I've got all these sections here. And we'll talk about a few more things and we'll wrap up. So on this screen here is the user section. So we got Barnum, we got Fred, we got me. It's possible to do some bulk operations here. Um, so you can disable everybody. You can uh, re-enable everybody. And you can also set their group. So let's say you've got a new group here and you want to add new stuff here. You can certainly do so. You can make somebody administrator. Um, and let's actually go look at groups. So over here, we've got the groups uh, portion here. And here's where we can either edit a group. So for instance, the administrators. Or we can create our own group here. And I'll, uh, I'll let you assume that you know what you can do in the uh, create group. But let's edit a group here and just kind of look a little deeper here. Um, and it'll cross over if you want to create your own group. So uh, sections. So what sections do they have access to? And again, sections are on that left-hand side. Um, Third-party packages can create their own sections, and you'll need to come here and enable or disable. And you can do that on a group-level basis. You can set their content start nodes or media start nodes. Um, their default permission. So here's where you start getting into menu items here. Who can do what? Um, and you can also do granular permissions, and this only applies to the content tree, uh, but you, sh you would be able to come here and say, just for this particular node, for this group, you can do this. One other thing you can do, you can add and remove um, users here. Ooh, one more feature I want to show you. So if we come back to the content here, because it's related, even though it's not in the user section, you can still right-click on a node, go to permissions, and now you have this group-based permission um, tool here. So if we want the editors to be able to do something, that should look familiar from the group, and you can set the permissions there. So, okay, I promise this time. That's all for the Umbraco user section. I'm pretty sure it'll evolve over time as well, but this is a huge update, and I hope you liked it. Thanks. Bye.